Hey there everybody, this is Corey Streeter with the Android channel and I'm here today with my rooted Samsung Galaxy S3 on Verizon. If you're interested in rooting your phone, I did post a procedure recently in the forums for the Galaxy S3. I also included a one-click root tool that makes it very easy to do. It takes about five minutes total. So today we're going to take a look at how to remove the excess bloatware that Verizon installs on the Samsung Galaxy S3 right out of the box. So these are apps that you can't uninstall. You can disable some of them, but you can't actually remove them from the device. Really this tutorial would apply to just about any phone that's rooted, but the one we're looking at today is specifically for the Verizon Galaxy S3. One example of an app that is always running in the background is Visual Voicemail. So this is an application that even if you don't use it, it's still going to run as a service on your phone and it's also going to eat up battery life, CPU and memory and all that kind of stuff. So just to prove that, let's go into the settings on the phone, take a look at the application manager, and then we're gonna scroll over to the running tab. You'll see that voicemail is still running as a service and a process. And if we scroll over one more time, you'll see there's an option to force stop the application, which basically kills it from running but there is no option to disable it altogether. That means the next time you boot up your phone, it's gonna start up and it's gonna be running again. That's definitely something we're gonna take care of. And we're gonna take care of all these apps using a file manager called Root Explorer. This is a program that I downloaded in the market. There's a lot of great applications out there for file management. This is just one that I've used for a really long time and I'm really comfortable with it and it works well. Right now we're in the system app folder. So this is a folder that you normally wouldn't have access to and you wouldn't be able to manipulate files in it unless you're rooted. You can see here, these are all the applications that come with the phone and you can see some of the bloatware we're about to remove. Things like VZ Tones, VZ Navigator. There's also, let's scroll down a little further and take a look. What else we got here? There's two files for voicemail. There's an APK and an ODEX file. Some of the files or some of the applications are broken out that way. And without getting too technical, splitting out the ODEX file allows the app to start up faster. So it does help speed up that process. Accessories is gonna be at the bottom. There's even some apps that you can get rid of that maybe are included with the Samsung software as well. If you're not gonna use them that often, that's what I did. Uh, here's another one, Candid APK. That's the caller ID app that shows the city and state of the person that's calling. That's a paid service as well. I think it's three bucks a month. There's free applications in the market that do the same thing. You can't get rid of that app unless you root the phone. There actually is an uninstall button with inside the app, but all it does is get rid of the icon on the home screen and then the app drawer doesn't really, doesn't really uninstall it. So now that we've checked a few apps, let's go ahead and move them over to the external SD card. I'm gonna click the cut button down at the bottom of the screen here. And now we're gonna click on the external SD card. So these are tabs at the top here. These are folders that I've been to recently. Normally you just navigate to it. I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. I'm gonna click move here. Okay, simple as pie. There they are in the list. They're on my SD card for a backup. If I wanna restore them, I can. Let's take a look at the app drawer. And you can see the shortcuts that I created earlier are indeed gone. Now there is something you need to be aware of if you go back into Root Explorer. You'll see that the permissions changed on the files themselves once you moved them over to the SD card. So when you do move them back, let's go ahead and move them back to the app folder here. Click cut, go to app and move here. And they move over. So you'll notice that the permissions on these files are now pretty much wide open for everybody. So let's go ahead and click on the file. You'll see permissions here for the owner or set to read, write, execute group is read, write, execute, others is read and execute. Permissions in this folder for files in this folder should actually be just like this. Okay, that's sort of the stock way the permissions are set. Read, write for the owner, no execute, and then just read access for group and others. For security reasons, I would definitely recommend going back in. If you ever move an app back, I would definitely recommend going in here and toggling these back just to keep your phone safe and secure and all that kind of stuff. So that's basically it. If you do move apps this way, you'll notice they don't show back up in the app drawer right away. You do need to reboot the phone and then you'll see the icon show up again. This has been Corey Streeter with the Android channel. If you have any questions, please visit the forums and have a good one.